Hey there, Shirtflight here, and I'm here with the Midnight Hatter, and we'll be doing a tier list of the various Gundam vs. Eta Gundam units. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming here as well. <laughs> Given that I and Hatter have played for uh, quite some time, it might be an interesting endeavor. So without further ado, we shall start. So, the GM2, what do you think about the GM2? So the GM2, personally, I like it. It's a really good unit because it's got the, the heavy shield um, and the beam rifle is obviously a huge improvement on the beam spray gun from the GM1, right? Yeah. So I guess personally, I would probably put that in like... You know, I, I don't, since it's just the first one to start out, I, I might just put it, like, in C as, like, a baseline <laughs> medium. Uh, so, personally, I think that it's just a slightly better version of the gym, so, yeah, I suppose I'll go with the C tier as well, because the thing with the GM is uh, that, uh, is mostly just uh, used for the same uh, reason uh, you would use a ball because it's a thing that shoots and moves. And you have a death wish. Yep. So yeah, a slightly better GM. I, I prefer Nemo's when it comes to the GM-like ones. And, oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, speaking of the Nemo, I think I'd go with Lower B tier? Yeah, no, Nemo definitely goes above the GM2 because, you know, you get all the benefits of the GM2 but with a more accurate rifle. Yeah, and... Uh, a little bit more speed. And it can actually handle a few shots. Yeah. Where do you place the Nemo? B as well? I would put the Nemo in B. I, I would put it as a high B. I, I might even go A if we, you know, if we're talking about like good team units, because obviously the whole whole game is around making a, a solid team of two units that can, of course, take on wave after wave, right? I mean, for a for a support unit, I put it uh, as a high B as well, but for a for, for a, a solo unit. Yeah. <laughs> not not yeah. so much. Yeah. Low B. The Black Rig DS, I think I'd, I'll put it in the B tier. It's chunky, it's cumbersome at times, but it's still mobile enough to do its role. I would say so. You get a little bit of... The, the reason I would drop it to a C, personally, is because I think that the red Rick DS you probably get a little bit better performance out of. Yeah, I'd say that. But on the subject of Rick DS, how do you feel about the um, black Rick DS with the clay bazooka? Oh, the clay bazooka. I kind of like the clay bazooka Rick DS, even though I prefer the clay bazooka red Rick DS. Because that Natural. one, uh, that one can uh, still do out of angle shots with the pistols on the back. Exactly. Though at the same time, the head Vulcans of the Black Rig DS are pretty decent, head Vulcans wise. So I suppose I'll put it uh, above the regular Rig DS because of the damage output but uh, still b below the red one which I think I'll put in the A tier Wow I mean lower A tier yeah let's go higher B tier no no I mean I, I, w I want to hear your uh, your explanation for an A tier red Rick DS I mean it's uh, it's versatile enough, uh, like with the pistol switch, it's versatile enough for it to be uh, useful in uh, certain situations. And uh, at the same time it has the back pistols, which gives it an edge. 
Yeah, the back pistols are a huge, huge benefit. Yep. Now, so does that mean that you put the clay bazooka uh, red Rick Diaz in A tier? Or do you put it in B tier? I'd put it uh, lower than uh, the pistol one. Because it doesn't have the reload thing. True. I agree with that. So, what do we have up next? Oh, Mephis. Well. So, where did you rank the Mephis? Because it's been a while since I've actually played as the Mephis. Mm, I think I'd go C tier, maybe B tier. It's, uh. It's got one thing going for it, and uh, that being a long boost gauge and uh, pretty formidable speed, but. Uh, but the power is uh, pretty meh if you don't uh, hit both shots, and uh, and basically it has to use the uh, grenade launcher as a crutch. So yeah, yeah probably, I agree with that. I'd say it's not bad for a low-end uh, transformable suit, but there's better. I agree with that. I, I would put it as, as a high C tier because it, it does it like you said, it's got the variable aspect to it, but it's definitely not my favorite in terms of durability and damage output. Well, uh, moving on to the uh, onto Amro's unit. DJ now the DJ I really like, it's kind of like a combination of a Gelgoog and a Rick DS in performance, right? Yeah. I would probably set the DJ up as like a B tier. Um because, you know, I think that what you what you lack in the beam pistols from the Rick DS, you get the beam Naginata um the twirling. <laughs> I think yeah. It's kinda like a better Gale Goog of sorts. Exactly. So I'll be putting him right over there. Yes. Upper B tier. And uh, the clay bazooka flavor. What are your thoughts on that one? Well, I am terrible at like mid to close range combat with, with most units. So I always rank the clay bazooka model uh, one tier lower than the... <laughs> either beam rifle or beam pistol model. Um, you still get all the same performance, but unless you are really good at, you know, zipping in and getting that close range clay bazooka shot, you know, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I will put it uh, under the rig DS with the clay bazooka, but above the rig DS with uh, the beam pistol. Uh, I'll have to check my notes because and that's that's not the airburst one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because you and I haven't played Gundam Gundam versus Zeta Gundam against each other before, so I don't know what your uh, what your technique is for for taking down enemy units. Uh, it depends on what unit I'm playing. I'm really a fan of uh, the Gaza C because that's uh, basically this game's uh, equivalent of a stance character of a fight from a fighting game. But I'd be spoiling too much before we get to that one. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I I do want you to elaborate on that when we get to the Gaza. Okay. So Mark II. I really like the Mark II. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, somewhere in the A tier is where it should reside. I agree with that. I, I, all, I thought it was going to be a controversial opinion to rank the Mark II so high, but, um, you know, uh, I've, I've read that a lot of complaints about the Mark II are that the reload kind of freezes you in place, but if you stun your enemy, then you shouldn't have a problem reloading real quick while they're still on the ground. I think it should be used more with the Vulcans, I'd say. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I mostly used it that way so that uh, the 
eventual reload would come uh, mostly when I was about to knock him down. There's also this uh, one uh, move that it has uh, that lets you use the other beam saber using the left hand so that you don't have to switch out the weapon. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, I suppose it's in the A. As for the as for the bazooka, I think it's r right under that one because uh, unless you do a direct hit, it just uh, scatters into very small ones, which mm -hmm. are which makes it uh, into a situational we uh, weapon, I'd say. Like, Very true. Uh, unless you can isolate both and both members of the enemy team, you know, in a very tight grouping, then a and the bazooka doesn't have as good tracking as some of the other missile weapons that that we're going to see later down the down the list. Yeah. And uh speaking of weapons, here's uh the Super Gundam. <laughs> so I really like the groby mechanic with the long beam shot even though it does give me trouble at times because it's a weird mix between uh, Zeta's uh, hyper mega launcher and uh, the beam attacks from the later games right so where do you think it falls I think I'd put it on lower S tier. Ow. Okay, so this is going to be the one that I disagree with you on because I am putting the Super Gundam in the D tier. <laughs> 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 but no, you, you're much more accurate than I am. Um, having watched some of your gameplay, I can tell that you're very good at, at, at hitting that long rifle shot. Um, I think the weakness of the Super Gundam comes from the lack of supporting weapons because it has, you know, not a lot of melee to speak of and then you only get the grenade launcher as a sub, as a sub weapon. Yes, which only fires uh, pro uh, on a under a proper angle uh, when uh, you're in the mobile armor mode. Exactly. Yeah, otherwise you get that arcing shot. I use it, uh, I use the long beam shot uh, mostly when uh, the enemy either uh, misses a melee attack or uh, when it's already stunned by one of the missile shots. It works wonders. Yes, if you can, if you can land it on a stunned enemy then you're in good shape. Yeah, and uh, now, we're, now we're at the machine of one uh, by the name of Notchar. In fact, he's a quattro. <laughs> yeah, you could say that he's never betrayed anybody in his entire life. <laughs> so what do you think of the Hyakushiki? I think it's uh, it's a nice blend of uh, of Sharzaku, the Gelguk, and the Gundam. In uh, various aspects, I mean, you have the out of angle shot correction of uh, Gundam, like from the newer games. You have the parry move, and uh, you have the how's it called? Yeah, you have the kicks in the combos, which look stylish as all hell. <laughs> yeah, it's. You know, I, I wonder sometimes if the if the the cool factor of the suit outweighs its performance because to me I would put it in like lower S tier, high A tier. Um but I think that's a lot of it just comes down to how cool looking the the over the back shot is. And that melee combo where he does the wide strikes, it's very hard for enemies to get out of that um out of that hitbox. I think uh, yeah, I'll put it in uh, lower S tier as well. 
As for the bazooka one, I I think I'm putting it. Uh, I think I'm putting it uh, in the upper right tier because, uh, well, it has uh, significantly worse approaching options. Before he's in the effective range, aside from the Vulcans, but the Vulcans are more just more of a a nuisance to the enemy than an actual threat, as opposed to I the agree. beam shots. So, yeah, when you're up close, it's upper est. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's the either is the S tier, but. Uh, when you are hitting from afar, it's it's definitely back in the A tier or upper B. <laughs> but I'm keeping yeah. it in the A tier because it's a nice middle between the two extremes. It is. If you have a long range support unit, then and you can be devastating with the bazooka shiki. Yeah. And. Uh, Here's your favorite, uh, Zeta. Zeta? Well, star of the show, I would say Zeta is S tier. Has to be, right? Um, it's fast. It has some of the best uh, melee combos in the game. It is one of the more expensive suits, but I think it's worth it. And I, I mean, what do you think? I think uh, the regular one, uh, it's... Uh, well... I'm having quite a hard time deciding whether it's on the par with uh, the G Defensor Mark II or uh, or better than that one because it's it's got the approach options, it's got the mobility, it's basically an incredibly high-end version of an all-rounder unit. So yeah, I yeah. think I'll put it above the Super Gundam, and I'm putting the High Mega Launcher. Well, it's a situational one, but I think I'll put it uh, on the very top. Well, for the time being. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. The um, the hyper mega launcher version. Uh, I think I actually learned how to use it properly from watching some of your videos because in the you know what twelve years that I've been playing this game. Uh, I never thought to only use it while in variable mode. I would always try to land the shot in mobile suit mode, but you get a, you get so much of a cleaner shot when you're in wave rider mode. Yeah, there's there's a degree of uh, angle correction, and the wind up animation is much much shorter. And I kind of like the grenades as well. Because the grenades are a nice touch. Yeah, because surprisingly enough, you can uh, use them at uh, a melee range, and uh, because the shield is basically in indestructible, <laughs> you can just go ham with it. And uh, if you hit it under the right angle, the blast uh, hits the shield and not you, and you don't get any self damage from that. That's awesome. Yeah, the the Zeta Gundam shield is way overpowered for being as small as it is. <laughs> yeah. So, GM ground type. Well, for the beam oh, rifle good. variant, I'm not a huge fan. Um, again, because of my terrible aiming. <laughs> I agree. Um, I don't like that one as well. Yeah, where would you put the uh, the beam rifle variant? Because it's a pretty slow unit. I think D. Like, lower D. I think, uh, I think D is fair. I, I might even... Considering that we've got the machine gun variant coming up next, I would put the beam rifle variant in E, and knowing that I'm going to put the machine gun variant in D. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as for the machine gun one, uh, I think uh, the the GM ground type uh, has quite a lot of potential to be 
a decent support unit because uh, the machine gun uh, can uh, be reloaded quite quickly so you can just spam a barrage of bullets at the enemy and I really love the taunt animation where it just uh, waves at the enemy yeah <laughs> so you've got some uh, psychological warfare going on <laughs> And uh, yeah, I agree with that. Well, ground Gundam, also with beam rifle. I think uh, a tad bit lower than uh, the machine gun uh, ground gym, but above the beam rifle ground gym, because it it has at least more speed, slightly better melee, and uh, and some more health to boot. So. Yeah, it uh, it is basically a nicer version of the of the GM ground type with the beam rifle. I think that the the problem is that because of cost, it makes it a hard unit to pair with. I agree. It's definitely easier to make a team with the ground GM than it is to make one with the ground Gundam. Yep, and there's the machine gun uh, version which is I think it places slightly above the the beam rifle uh, ground Gundam but uh, below the below the ground GM because uh, for the cost uh, you're basically getting uh, the machine gun and uh, the chest Vulcans which are kind of redundant when you have the machine gun, which you can <laughs> infinitely reload. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the uh, the chest Vulcans are they're great as a as a sub weapon, but you know, not when your main weapon is is a machine about gun, the same yeah. level of damage output. <laughs> yeah. So then, where would you put the rocket launcher variant? Because we have a lot of ground Gundams, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have the rocket launcher one, the cannon one, and the missile one. I think the rocket launcher it's uh it's basically a low end uh, variant of uh of the bazooka grunts, like the Zack with a bazooka, but it doesn't have the grenades, which are pretty cool. I think yeah, I'll keep it in the D tier. Yeah, I would agree with you on that one. Um, you know, it does provide some variety that the machine gun ground Gundam doesn't have. But, you know, again, for the cost, I would rather go with, like, Zaku that has a bazooka, right? Yep. So then what about the long-range cannon? The, uh... Well, I'm tempted. Even... I'm tempted to put it uh, maybe very low C, because uh, in that case the the chest Vulcans kind of have a role by uh, both filling in for the cannon and uh, being a half decent interceptor for the uh, for things like rockets. And uh, yeah. you can basically fire the whole thing, uh, the whole sub weapon uh, in the sniping mode. So basically, you can just stand in place and annoy uh, the other players from the end of the map, from the other end of the map. So yeah, I think it just makes it to the C tier. Yeah, definitely. Now with the missiles. How do you feel about those? Because I would rank them higher than the cannon, just for the versatility. Well, I think uh, it's basically a better version of the rocket uh, one, but I really like cannon units, like the Megalotop Zaku. But, uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Because the two are, the two are pretty good, but I think I prefer the cannon over the missiles, just because of the projectile speed and 
the fact that it can't be intercepted that easily. Yeah, that's true. And now we're getting to the to the vanilla GM. So vanilla GM. Yeah. Well, I would say something needs to go in the F tier, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I, I I would listen to your argument if you uh, if you have a good reason for it to be in like D tier. I I do. It has a big shield, so its its defensive abilities are actually pretty good. But it has you know no ranged attack with that with that beam spray gun. If you're not right up in their face, then you're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, I think that yeah the range is uh, uh, not very uh, not uh, very impressive. The head vulcans are. Well, basically subpar, and but the the special melee is kind of neat. I'm tempted to put it right next to the beam rifle ground GM. Maybe a nah, maybe a little above it, but I don't think that would work. No, I mean I think that's fair. I, you definitely get points for the versatility because you can use the the regular GM in space or on the land. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, the shield is not very consistent at times. I mean, once uh, once I tried going an arcade run with the with the GM, and I just ended up getting hit through the shield. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the shield collider isn't correct. Like it, it doesn't protect you all the way around. <laughs> yeah, so that one goes into the E. I mean, I would <laughs> put it into the F tier, but I would just be warm, warming uh, up the spot for the <laughs> for the ball. <laughs> That's true. We do have one going there soon. <laughs> Yeah, um, the gun tank. Uh, well, it's basically a sitting deck with two large guns. So. Yeah, I mean, I would probably put it in D tier because uh, if you land those shots, it does. Yeah, I know. Solid it's, damage. It's pretty deadly, and uh, I kind of like pestering the other players just from. Uh, very much, very far. It has pretty decent health as well, but well, it burns through it quickly because it's slow as heck. So yeah, you can't get away from a, a tough melee opponent. Yeah, and uh, and basically the Bob missiles are a joke. <laughs> they are. How do you feel about the in between the the gun cannon, right? Oh, well, the gun cannon. I really like the gun cannon. It's basically what uh, what the ground Gundam should have been. I agree with that. You know, it's got a really good beam rifle. I would even put it like low B tier, um, just because of its flexibility. Because you have the beam rifle for your uh, you know closer to mid range, and then for your mid to long range, you've got the shoulder cannons. Um, and you've got the stylish kick as, uh, kicks as well. Yes, it it has some of the coolest looking melee, even if it's not the most, you know, uh, effective. If yeah. it doesn't, yeah, do the most damage. Yeah, so versatility and style points. Speaking of versatility and style points, here we have the RX seventy eight. Okay, so I I really like the RX seventy eight. Um, you know, you're limited on beam rifle shot. This is the beam rifle variant, right? Yeah. So with the beam rifle variant, you know, you are limited on shots a little bit, but um, where I would say, what what I think makes it S tier is that this game makes it like almost a mid-cost unit compared to, you know, Federation versus Xeon where it's the most expensive unit um, because you have all the Zeta yeah. era mobile suits. You have like a really, really balanced mobile suit. But it's not as expensive as like the Zeta or the Gaplant or something like that. I agree. Like for an old game unit, 
I think it gets a spot right after the gun cannon above the Nemo maybe above the rig DS but under the under the DJ with the clay bazooka <laughs> yeah all the Amaro units have to keep themselves company <laughs> yeah so then where do you think the hyper bazooka model falls I think it's uh I think it falls either next to the clay bazooka uh, black rig DS or uh, next to the clay bazooka DG. I mean it's uh, the tracking's pretty good and uh, and it hits pretty hard but I prefer the beam rifle in this case yeah, I agree with you there. As for the Gundam Hammer, I mean, I would, for the sheer meme potential, I think I would put it in the S tier. But since this, <laughs> uh, since this is not, uh, what was it called, uh, Gundam Battle Assault 2? <laughs> Where it just yelled out, Gundam Hammer! <laughs> exactly. So yeah, Gundam Hammer hammers its way to the lower A tier, I'd say. Yeah, it's surprisingly for as big as the Gundam Hammer is, it uh it's it's sometimes hard to connect with. Yeah, because there's there's a rope between the ball and the Gundam. Right. So now here we have the Cubelay Mark II. From the double no, I really like the cube delay. Um, you know, I, I like that uh, I don't have to aim <laughs> with my ranged attacks. I would probably put it in lower A tier, even though it has kind of garbage melee potential. Um, you know, it's always fun when you can float around the map and let your funnels do all the hard work. Yeah, I think so as well, even though I think I'll put it... Uh under the regular cubelay because uh, this one has a fork shaped uh, sword and uh, I'm not really a fan of that mm, true I, I and I haven't even tested to see whether that affects the the hitbox of it or not whether it you know makes it easier or harder to land yeah I haven't tested that one as well now for the double Z uh... That's a neat suit. I think I should put it somewhere either in the up yeah, somewhere in the upper parts of the S tier. I think it it has a very versatile toolkit melee and all. Even it though it does a very powerful suit. Yeah. Even though it I mean, it's more versatile than Super Gundam while keeping the big beam attack, so I think I'll put it over there and I'll put the beam cannon one under the Super Gundam because uh, the beam cannon one, even though it has uh, great melee, okay, it, it goes about, uh, above the Super Gundam, but it has <laughs> great melee. But unfortunately, what it's what's uh, holding it back is that uh, it uh, put it uh, keeps you in place while you're shooting, and uh, that kind of an annoys me at times because I'm yeah. more or less just a sitting deck for a split second. <laughs> and you would expect it to do more damage if you're going to be stuck in place like that. You know, you would expect it to do gun tank level damage, but yeah. And uh, yeah, the the blue Isaac. So basically, almost indistinguishable from the green one, but uh, basically it's blue. So <laughs> I think I'm putting this blueberry over here. Yeah, I think it goes uh, above the missile ground Gundam in the C tier. 
but because it has uh, both the missiles and uh, the machine gun so that it can cover more areas of expertise while being well it's kind of durable against some things but other things just shred it so yeah it's <laughs> over there yeah it uh and, and it does lack a bit of reach on its um or no no the the, the blue hijack correct me if i'm wrong does that one have a beam saber or a heat hawk Oh, uh, well, it uh, mostly depends uh, on whether you have the Marisai rifle or the machine gun, just like with the regular one. Gotcha. So, the one with the Marisai rifle, that's the one that has the Heat Hawk? Yep. Then, yeah, I would I would uh, rank the, the machine gun Isaac a little bit higher than the Marisai rifle one. As much as I love the Marisai rifle, which we'll get to that soon... <laughs> Um, I think that, uh, yeah, having the beam saber option gives you a little more reach in melee combat, so you're a little more balanced. Yeah, I think that I prefer the Marisai rifle on the Marisai, so, yeah, I'm putting the Marisai rifle Isaac in the, in the pile under the, no, uh, well, above the rocket launcher ground Gundam, but, uh, under the missiles one. Basically upper D tier. And uh, yeah. I you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to be a troll on this one. I'm going to say that the green Hyzak is one tier below the blue Hyzak if only because I like those uh, Titans colors better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean if... <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to be a meme, I would have just put every mono eye thingy into the S tier, but <laughs> yeah, we're going with uh, the way it works, not w uh, with uh, how how it looks. Okay, as for the <laughs> as for the Heiser Custom, I think I think it's right next to the ground Gundam uh, with with a cannon because it has the it has the charge up of uh, the hyper mega launcher half the damage maybe I haven't tested that yet but uh, likely less than a hyper mega launchers thingy it has a slow recharge and the sub weapon on it which is the which is the weakest blocking thing I've ever seen <laughs> yeah it's... it's not great yeah now, I, I will give credit where it's due. It is an inexpensive unit, so if, if you're picking for support and you want like a long-range cannon unit for support, it's, it's not a bad option. But yeah. You better make sure that your partner is like Zeta Gundam or something. <laughs> yeah, but basically a Zaku with a Megala top cannon could do a better job, in my opinion. That is true. Gabaldi Beta. Mm. Basically, Galgog without the cool thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a great melee suit. Um, it's fun to use, but uh, yeah, you know, as far as damage output and mobility, it's kind of meh. Yeah, I think I'll put it. Uh, I think I'll put it above the Isaac. Well, except for the. Isaac custom because that one at least has some damage. This one just has a shield that has missiles, but when the shield gets destroyed, there's no more missiles. Yep. So, so basically, again with a gun. <laughs> yeah, that's, there aspect. you go. Gun with a gun is a good way of putting it. Okay, now for another red machine, the Marisai. I kind of like the Marisai, surprisingly enough. So, I think it should get a spot next to the Nemo, either above or below. Because uh, I like the burst fire thingy, because it actually gives me some breathing room when it gets to uh, the ammo pool, unlike 
the Merasai rifle high axe, which just fire off one shot and then wait for all eternity. Okay, that's that <laughs> was a bit of hyperbole, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and it... no, I agree. I put I almost put the Merasai in the A tier next to the well because I have the Mark II in the A tier. So I I mean I beat the game you know, three or four times using just the Marisai because of, like you said, the rapid, or the burst fire beam rifle, which actually has a little bit of tracking to it, too. Yeah, it's not, uh... Yep, that, you're guaranteed and, to hit at least one shot. And the melee. I really like the melee. So, for the coolness factor, I'm moving it a few more places. Maybe... Okay, I'm moving it a it's too far, but I think it could make the upper B tier. Because it's pretty fast. Hmm, yeah. Barzum. Barzum's gonna be an interesting case. On one hand, uh, uh, it uh, has the Mega Man Hand Blaster. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it, uh... And the melee kinda looks cool, but... There's there's a few shortcomings that kind of hinder it from becoming uh, one of the top units. Namely the, the fact that uh, you can't really retarget or use the circle button when uh, charging. Mm -hmm. Which uh, makes the whole charging thing more cumbersome. So, yeah, as a support unit, it's a very good one, but I think, yeah, lower A. Yeah, I, I drop it in the uh, in the B tier myself. I'm, I don't use it very often, um, and it's a little expensive for uh, for an all rounder support unit. You know, if you were going to be like a long range support unit, obviously there's better options. But um, yeah, it's more of an all rounder unit. I think, uh, yeah, I just use it for messing around because I uh, really like the charging thing. It's a bit of novelty, a gimmick, but a fun gimmick nonetheless. Uh, yeah, cool points are awarded here. <laughs> yeah, cool points are indeed aw awarded, so. Oh, the Bjarland. Oh, I think that's... It looks cool, but unfortunately it has uh, quite a few things holding it back. Oh yeah, I agree with that. Um, the the Bjarland is almost like the prototype of some of the newer versus series games where there's a lot of like mid-air combat and a lot of floatiness, except the Bjarland is not good. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like if you play some of like the seed versus games, you do you get that same sort of floaty gameplay, but um, but at least uh, yeah, you can move I've out of the way. Been... You're not just a, a yes. floating duck, so to speak. Uh, basically, I mean, in the versus games, there's the bird-looking den unit. There's the jet windows, jet daggers. Uh, this one's uh. I kind of like the melee side of it, and the fact that it's basically what uh, what should be a, gr a grappler equivalent in this game, like something like Zangief but flying. But unfortunately, it gets shot out of the air so easily. It's just it's charging in, but. Aside from putting pressure on the other player, uh, from the sheer sheer imposing size, it's it's not very impressive. So I'd say, uh, well, it deals sufficient uh, damage to avoid the C tier, and yeah, if ah, it it gets in the C tier right above the Mephis. Because it's a fat target. I think that's fair. And the gap flea. Oh, I do like my gap flea. I do indeed like my gap flea. 
somewhere in the S tier, maybe. I mean, it has. Yeah, yeah, I would get. I would give it high A, low S because it's. I mean, you get the variable aspect of it. You've got the claw arm attack. Um, it's got tons of of beam rifles on it, right? Because you have the shoulder beam rifles. Yeah, which run dry pretty fast if used uh, if used by an individual like me. <laughs> um, then I don't even know how to pronounce the beam rifle that it uses. The Fayadeen, right? Is that? I call it the Fayadeen rifle, and I kind of hope I've got it right. <laughs> well, you know how it is when pronouncing Gundam things. Yeah, you know, it's a uh, Ayug versus Titans. Yeah, or people are uh, reading something that's uh, written as Jin, uh, as Gin, like G-I-N-N, as Jin, and I, it's just, I think it reminds me of people who read GIF as a GIF, and it, it feels, it feels weird. I know. <laughs> it's graphics interchange format. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, for the punchy donut. I like the punchy donut. Punchy donut, great. Uh, okay, great gun, great punch, great donut. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah, somewhere in the S tier. Donut go brrr. <laughs> yeah. Now for the masala. Well, that's that's gonna be a tricky one. It has the same problem as uh, the Super Gundam in terms of missiles, with the angle right. and. Uh, and the, f and the other things, but I kind of like the cans, uh, but at the same time they kind of stop it in place. Though the, the stopping in place is prevented by the mobile armor mode, but it's it's an oddball to be sure. So mm. yeah, where should I put it? I think somewhere in the B tier, perhaps. I think that's fair. Um, I, I'm being much more harsh on units than you are, <laughs> so I'm going to put it in the C tier, probably, uh, probably ahead of. Oh, I'll put it like right next to the um, Isaac. Okay. Mm, Geplans. Geplans gonna be. Yeah, the Geplans. Geplans a high A tier, no questions about that because yeah, I, I love the Gaplan. <laughs> it's fast. You get the double beam saber attacks, which are almost impossible to dodge. Yeah, you get uh, you get the wing guns, or at least that's how I like to call it. It's probably something like binders or shields. Mm-hmm. And uh it sucks that you lose one if you um if you have the recover ability uh yep. set. Yeah, you end and up losing then... one. Yep. That ge uh, that becomes quite a bummer. The hand cannons hambrabi. So I think the hambrabi with the hand cannons is of uh, well I'd say above Barzum, but yeah, above Barzum. It's a glass cannon, but it doesn't have the sea serpent, and uh, therefore it likes the that one special cool thingy that would make it shine. Yeah, I really think that the Hambrabi should have been one unit that has the beam cannons and then the sea serpent as a sub weapon, the way that the uh, way that the goof has the heat rod. If I remember correctly, in the new games, it has the Fade Union Rifle as the charge attack, it has the uh, back uh, beam guns as uh, a sub weapon, and it has the Sea Serpent as the back melee. Yeah, uh, see, that's the way that's the way it should have been done. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, the Sea Serpent it it places be. Yeah, somewhere between the, between the, I think, uh, Bazooka Mark II, I think, 
between Hyakushiki and Mark II. Because it it's quite powerful up close between the Bazooka Shiki True. and Mark II. Uh, and uh, at the same time the the armor is the armor is the way it is and uh, the way it is is that it's uh, not very good. <laughs> okay, now for the Psycho Gundam. Ooh. I Where do you rank? So this is the first mobile armor that we're that we're talking about. Yeah, I think it's uh I think it's definitely a one that gets uh the shorter end of the stick in the game. Because because the shotgun beams in the front are basically the only ranged weapon it has in the in the mobile fortress mode also known as the i field mode in the game <laughs> yeah, i think it's the i field thingy is pretty good but uh i mostly go with uh Ballistic weapons when I'm up against it, and uh, oh, it's a uh, sitting deck at that point, so yeah. Yeah, it's a big slow target. <laughs> yep, and a big slow target like the gun tank, but unfortunately, it doesn't have the support potential, so yeah, back to the e pilot goes. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, Psycho Mark II, that's, that's much more much more versatile, fellow. Yeah, you get the reflector bits, which yeah. make it almost, you know, it almost has funnels. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they still have their shortcomings, like a very abysmal ammo pool at times. Yeah, too true. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried uh, using it as a flying brick and just sniping from the other side of the map, and uh, then I just ran out and uh, things just swar swarmed me and uh, just shanked me with the beam saber. So, yeah, not <laughs> not not very good. Yeah, nothing nothing the eye field can do for that. <laughs> yeah. Now for the for the gray bound dock, I like this one uh, more than the regular bound dock because it has uh, more kicks in the combos yes but yeah, I think it's it's got it's got its gimmicks and uh, it basically has the shotgun beam of the GOG and uh, certain gimmicks of the Gaza C it has the it has the glide thing that Gazzasi and the Bjarland have, but unfortunately it's quite large, so... It is a big fat target. <laughs> yep. But at least it's slightly faster than the regular variety of the big fat targets we have on this tier list so far. <laughs> it's true. We do have some coming up too that are... Uh don't have the ability to transform and get out of get out of dodge quickly. <laughs> yep. Okay. So I've placed mine on the upper C tier because the toolkit isn't bad and uh well it's still quite a fast target so Yeah, the gates cap I wanna get uh into the higher C tier and uh, somewhere in the middle resides the the regular variety one because that one doesn't have the cooler gimmick with the feet, yeah. You know, just as a side note, isn't it kinda silly that we get the Gat Gates Kappa bound dock, but we don't get the easy eight in this <laughs> in this game? Yeah, and uh, another funny thing is that the eye of uh, the, the mono eyes of the units in this game are the wrong color. They are like nine times out of ten. 
Yeah. Then they just do the thing where they kind of like randomly spaz out and look in different directions. Yeah, I love that detail. That's that's why I love the egg guy in this game. <laughs> yes, the egg guy is one of the best ones. But moving on. Yeah, moving on. So the the space ogre, the something that's uh, that I like to call the Shrek machine, the the boy dog smile <laughs> gets you with its claw and says, "Get out of my swamp!" Yeah, <laughs> I really like it, but it's I think it's basically. Superior to the Masala because, uh, well, it's quite mobile. It has the, it has beams. It has missiles that actually do fly in the target's general direction. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it has a very interesting claw attack. So I think I'm putting it uh, somewhere in the lower A tier. Right above the the hamburg. You know what? Scratch that. I'm I'm moving it into the middle of the A tier. I think that's fair. And uh, well, as for the Palace Athena, I think the scatter beam one is definitely the less useful one because it's <laughs> basically. It's basically a gog with a gun. Yeah, it's not my favorite. <laughs> and it's it's pretty slow as well. So yeah. somehow it's a larger target than a gog. <laughs> yeah, that's that's also true, and it doesn't have the cool uh, self projectile attack. <laughs> So yeah, I'm putting it somewhere below the the bound dock because the bound dock could at least fly away. Yeah, I think that's generous. I put it next to the uh, to the violent. Oh, where did you put the violent? I had the violent at uh, at E, but that's because you know I hate the floaty mobile suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's it's funny. Uh, shield missiles. I don't like the shield missile mobile suits. They're they're very gimmicky in the in the shield missile thing. I mean, it's slightly better than the than the Gabaldi beta because it has more health. But I'm not the I'm not a fan of the shield missile thing. It's basically just the thing that gets shut off at the start of the round and uh, basically until you respawn there's no more missiles yeah pretty much <laughs> now the large missile one that's that one's great i think it's i think it just makes it to the b tier because i just love the feeling of just flying off somewhere and pressing the sub weapon button, and then the whole uh, warehouse of ICBMs goes flying <laughs> at the other players. Yeah, I, I think it, that it feels incredibly badass to do that. It does it's? It, I will say it's um, it's easy to evade them for the most part, but oh man. Yeah. <laughs> you, you do feel a bit of panic when you see all, you know, all six <laughs> missiles coming at you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether it's eight or six. I'll have to check at some point. I think it might be eight. <laughs> yeah. Now for the space potato. <laughs> oh, space potato. So space potato is... That one should be somewhere... Probably near the double zeta. Yeah, yeah, I put it in, like, middle S as well, because, I mean, you know, look, I got two words for you. Watch sabers. 
Yeah, there's there's the crutch sabers. There's basically it's a pretty good one. Oh yeah, for first Zaku. <clears throat> I like the first Zaku. It's it's my guilty pleasure. It's I know it's <laughs> not good, but it's ah, I love the melee. It just it just Feels punches. So good when yes. You that melee. Yes, and the sliding kick that's that's just chef's kiss perfect. Yeah. I give it I give it extra points for the for the run animation too. It's got one of like the slinkiest run animations. Yeah, and uh the grenades as well. Those are very good for like preventing p people from taking off. Or just uh, giving them a hard time when they're landing, when they're on the ground. Even though the arc is awkward at some points, but yeah, it's it's pretty high on the C tier, but probably not in the B tier yet because uh, the the machine gun is yeah 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 the machine gun uh, doesn't deal even as much damage as some of the Vulcans in the game. Yeah, the machine gun just pretends to deal damage. Let's put it that way. <laughs> now, the bazooka, the bazooka, uh, Zach won that one's, that one's nice. I like that one. Right, you have two different ways to stun. Uh, yes. Uh, with... And uh, I love using it against things like the double Zeta, just because I... <laughs> Just because I wanna. <laughs> Zaku 2, it's... <clears throat> it's in a similar ter territory uh, if we're speaking about the machine gun version, because... It's got better armor than the Zaku one. It has the... The body slam special melee, that's pretty cool, but... I can't seem to hit it, no matter how hard I try, unless I just flank the enemy. And at that point, yeah. it's just free hits anyways. <clears throat> so yeah, it's just a bit above the Zack one in the C tier. But the Bazooka one, I think it, sh it should be in the lower B tier. Miguel Top Cannon. I love the Miguel Top Cannon. It's it's one of my favorites. I think it it's really good. It should make its way to the lower A tier, I'd say. Now, how do you feel about the leg missile variant? Because I love the leg missiles. I like the leg missiles as well. Are basic... you have great tracking on them, <laughs> yeah. And you still get the uh, you still get the machine gun, so it's not like you're, you know, with the Palace Athena. Sometimes it's like, well, why can't I have the large missiles and the shield missile? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. And uh, in my opinion, it's yeah, it's good. Uh, let me check. I have to look up the cost of it. Because I was about to say that uh, it has a lower cost than a Isaac, and uh, yep, I'm correct. It has a lower cost than a Isaac. So basically, you're getting uh, something that does the thing that Isaac does, but better at a lower cost. Exactly. And it has a spe uh, the special melee that can actually do some things. I mean, the body slam it. If you hit it, it's much better than the than the heat hog shove thingy or the or the jump in with the sword. It's it's much cooler and <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I think I'll put it besides the the Nemo on the B tier. Now the Sharzak, that's that's a much more interesting affair. Yeah, it's um, I really like Sharzaku, obviously for the speed and you know you it 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 really is just a a better version of your your regular Zaku too. Um, the cost kind of annoys me sometimes because it falls in that category of like 
just too expensive to get like a really strong ally unit but not expensive enough to be your be your star unit. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. Yeah, I think it should be let me think. I'm going to put it right next to the beam rifle rig the uh, beam pistol rig DS but above the Nemo. Okay. Yeah, I have it in the same tier, so as for the bazooka one, uh, I think it's a bit of a waste of points when you have the Zaku with the bazooka, and the regular Zaku with the bazooka, and Zaku one with the bazooka, and uh, yeah, the bazooka is kind of cumbersome with it, but yeah, I think it's a tier, not a tier, but uh, under, right under the leg missiles. Yeah, I put it in the same spot uh, beneath the leg missiles because, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the the bazooka does stop you when you when you go to fire it, right? Uh, if I recall correctly, yes. Because then it kind of defeats the purpose of having all of that speed of Sharzaku if you're going to have to stop to fire your weapon. Yeah. And uh, yeah, moving on to something that is no Zaku, the goof. And uh, the goof, yeah, it's definitely not a Zaku. I like the heat rod. That one's pretty cool. I mean, it's basically a nice blend of Hamber B and a Zaku, and it has the finger machine guns. Yeah, I'm thinking of putting it in the B tier, though I'm not completely sure where. So I, f I agree with you. I, I'm definitely putting it in the B tier. I like the heat rod more than the sea serpent, believe it or not. Because uh, I have gotten lucky with the heat rod, where even if I miss the target initially, they will run into it accidentally. <laughs> and you can also do the swipes with it, which yes. is also nice. So yeah, I think sea serpent with more ground control it. I think I'm putting it uh, right next to the Gundam in the B tier. Very nice. I like that. Though as for the Gyan, that's yeah. The Gyan, uh, it's it kind of follows the tradition of uh, of having a missile shield, but this one actually can handle a few sh shots before it breaks and uh, yeah I haven't uh, run out of that shield very often and I kinda like the mines for just trolling things close up <laughs> yeah that can be fun it's uh it's a little bit of a gimmicky unit but you know what that's it's a bit of a gimmicky mobile suit so <laughs> yep and the missiles, are, uh, while not uh, very useful for general combat, are pretty good approach to, at least in my opinion. Oh, for the rig dome. I see the rig dome and the dome variants as basically roller skaters with bazookas. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. They are good, um, good support units yeah. for. If you have like a gun tank as your ally and that's like your really expensive unit as the long range support it's nice to have a dom that can zip around in front and draw some enemy fire yeah and uh, while gimmicky the chest beam is pretty handy pretty handy even mm -hmm. though even though I did kind of run into some blunders, blunders when using that but then again I might be misremembering that uh, because I did test it w when uh, trying the the boy Oaks man and uh, <laughs> yeah that that one has the grab and yeah, so yeah, I think I'll put it uh, right next to the hyper bazooka Gundam. Or maybe next to the Clay Bazooka DJ because uh, 
Yeah, it has. It has pretty decent uh, defensive tools. It has pretty decent offensive tools. So yeah, I, th I think it should be. In the right place in the D. No, in the B tier. I'm sorry. <laughs> My brain just <laughs> shut off for a second. <laughs> That's okay, because I I did put it like in the D tier, because I you know. I think that it's a uh, it's it's good for the roles that it does, but um, you know, if you're gonna do like a general purpose, uh, an all rounder suit, there's there's obviously better options. Yeah, I just went with the coolness factor, and I I kind of shadow and I kind of shadow it uh, <laughs> momentarily. So yeah, I think I think I'm either putting it in the upper C tier, I'd say. Yeah, proper, probably, probably sit here. Yeah. As for the Zog, I, I don't like the Zog. The Zog is, the Zog is terrible. It's pretty bad. As far as giant targets go, you know, at least the Psycho Gundam in Mobile Fortress mode can stop beam attacks. The Zog can't even do that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it uh, needs water to use the sub weapon uh, somewhat. Uh, Effectively, so yeah, I'm putting it in the F tier. <laughs> I was thinking that uh, the ball would be the first one there, but no, it's actually the Zok. Yeah, they they made the Zok a little too, a little too weak for its size and its cost. A little too Zoki. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we get into these amphibious suits. How do you feel about the Zgok? I think the Zgok's great. Like it has, it has basically the same, uh, the same thing as uh, the GM with the beam attacks being not great, but not terrible at the same time. They do recharge pretty quickly. Yeah, that's that's great. It basically has the it has a blend of Gaza's uh, backpack uh, guns and uh, gun cannons, uh, bot missiles as a sub weapon, which which is pretty useful when uh, either under the water because you could do the dashing thing, which uh, makes it shoot forwards, or you can. Uh, Use it while falling, which uh, which shoots in a pretty good pattern. So yeah, I think I should put it. Uh, I think I'm putting it uh, right below the, the Gundam, like the gr Gundam ground type uh, with a cannon. Yeah, yeah, I put it pretty high C tier as well. As for Shars one, there isn't very much, very much that changes. It's just dead, but faster. But it's already pretty mobile, so yeah, it's just pointless to have it cost more. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it. Um, what does it have? Like maybe fifty more armor points than <laughs> the regular one. I can go check on that. Uh, so MSM O seven Zagok. Oh, Shars Zagok. Check. So the Zagok has four hundred and eighty, and Shars Zagok has forty less. In fact. Wow. But it's faster. Yeah, it is faster. I'm surprised that they that they docked armor points for. Yeah, that's it's one of the interesting things I found out uh, when uh, making uh, some of the charts that I make for the games. Uh, anyways, egg guy, it's adorable and I'm incredibly tempted to put it in the A tier or the S tier just based on an impulse alone, but I must I must control myself and put it in uh, somewhere in the B tier. Perhaps. 
Yikes. Oh yeah, I mean, I I have no such impulse control. I definitely put the at guy. It is A for at guy. <laughs> yeah, A for at guy. And <laughs> okay, I'm I'm slowly succumbing to the to the impulse. And oh no, I have I have been uh, defeated by such impulse, and therefore it is in the lower A tier, accompanying the Megalatop Cannon Zaku and. Uh, how was it called? Uh, RMS-154 uh, Barzum, yeah. And the GOG. I like the GOG. It's it's basically a giant projectile and uh, yeah, I... Yeah, the, the GOG is dangerous in the hands of someone who knows how to use it. Yeah, and I'm very, very biased. <laughs> and it. it's got a huge attack arc. Like, those long <laughs> arms can... It, it's it's frustrating to to fight against someone in a gog, and they you think that you're just outside of its melee range, and it still connects with you just barely on the tip. Yeah, and uh, sometimes uh, it can uh, it can recover fast enough to use the shotgun beams as well, which is also very funny. Oh, the the Gelgug. Well, since it's basically. Uh, I think I'll put it uh, slightly above the Gundam. I mean, it has uh, it has less health, but uh, it has both the shield and the and the blocking thing. So it just it's less vulnerable when it ends up losing the shield. So yeah. Yeah, having the extra defense options with the Gelgoog, um helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm putting the Charles Gilgo slightly above that because, I mean, it's, uh, it's more or less identical except for a few stat changes, so I guess I'll just, yeah, for the style points, it moves one place forward. <laughs> Now the Zeong, that's that's gonna be an interesting one. And yeah, that's a tough call because you know we we talked about the Cubile a little bit earlier, and and I love the Cubile's um, all attacks, but the Zeong's um, all range attacks not quite as good. They're they're great if you land them because they deal a lot of damage, but at the same time the recharge time is abysmal. Yeah, you're going to be floating around <laughs> begging not to be hit for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's like at the start of the round, uh, I. At the, well, when I started uh, playing uh, Gundam vs. Ada Gundam, I picked the Zeong and I just spammed the sub weapon. The hands flew everywhere. And then after the units dodged some of the attacks, I, I just. I went running into the corner and being like, please be gentle, I am recharging my stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then when you, um, if, if you use the recover ability with it and you lose your head, then you lose one of your, <laughs> one of your only other weapons. So it's like, you really are defenseless when you're using the Zeong. Yeah, so... Upper B tier, maybe... Yeah, I mean, I, I went pretty low with it. I was, like, for D, lower C tier, but, you know, like I said, I'm much I'm much harsher on these poor mobile suits than you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help that uh, they're quite adorable, and I have a weak spot for grunts. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it, it gets moved into the C tier, because, as you said, the... The recharge time is what's holding it back. Now for the gas C. I like the gas C. You, you probably mentioned at some point that you are not a fan yourself. So I I have recently gone back and played with it a little bit more um, because I'm not a big fan of the gas C as a mobile suit. But playing it at, in Gundam versus Zeta Gundam. And seeing the advantages of having a really low-cost 
high speed variable suit come to appreciate it a little bit more <laughs> it's uh, yeah the stickman aesthetic uh, maybe a a bit off putting uh, to some but I kind of like it because uh, it basically has uh, the angle correction uh, in the mobile armor mode for uh, the sub weapon and uh, it has the glide of the Bjarlund and it uh, it has quite the versatile uh, toolkit so Except it's not the size of a bus like yeah. the Bjarlund <laughs> <laughs> yep so I'm just I'm putting it in the in the S tier uh, I I'm okay with that <laughs> <laughs> Where did you put uh, the Gaza C? I put it in the B tier myself. I'm gonna have to play with it a little bit more and uh, and appreciate some of this angle correction. And, yeah, I uh, see. I haven't built the ga uh, the Gaza C addiction up yet. <laughs> <laughs> right. I need a few more a uh, few more hits. Yeah, and uh, oh, the Q blade. The Q blade is gonna be quite a fine unit. Yeah, I'm probably putting it either upper A or somewhere mid S. Maybe. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of split on that one. I mean, I I I agree with you. I think that um the Mons Cubile is definitely way better than the Cubile Mark II, and so I think that bumps it up to the S tier, um, just for its. Does it have a... Uh, I, I think it has a hit point bonus over the Cubile Mark II, doesn't it? Uh, let me check. Uh, so... Yeah, the AMX... Okay, the list I have is pretty long, so... It'll take a second before I find it, but... Okay. Eon AMX... Now it's got literally the same stats. So the only difference is just the uh, the beam saber formation, then, huh? Uh, yes, and uh, one of the melee attacks is slightly different. It's the dash melee. Instead of a diagonal slash downwards, it's uh, an outward slash. So yeah, it just Ooh. waves the beam saber a little differently, but they're both identical. Oh, like I said, there's there's nothing, no better feeling than hitting that sub weapon and just ejecting all, yes. <laughs> all ten funnels. <laughs> yes, and uh, well, the G uh, G defensor. Um, well, I want to put it in the F tier because it's it's not very good, but. At the same time, I can use it on ground maps as a subflight system. Ah, okay, that's that's a tough one. I think that the G Defensor gets. Uh, I, I would put it in the E because it's still it's better than some of the other fighters. I would say. Yeah, to to be frank, yes. Now the ball, the ball is okay. <laughs> uh, the ball. Maybe, maybe, maybe upper E tier. Wow, really? I was going straight to F. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the I think the most frustrating thing about the ball is that for a recoilless cannon, it has a lot of recoil. <laughs> yes, but I mean, it uh, it gets an edge over things like uh, the GM. At least on the space maps with uh, zero gravity, uh, in in the fact that uh, it's basically cheaper and uh, yeah, you can just spam those out. So yeah, I I do tend to call it the spammable flying uh, gun tank because that's more or less what it does. Yeah, that, that's a fair description. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting it slightly ab above the Psycho Gundam and the, <laughs> and the GM, which might be a bit odd, but yeah, I, 
I did play with it and uh, it's funny just shooting things above the weight category of the ball and when the thing <laughs> connects it it deals pretty decent damage like uh, gun tank levels of decent damage so yeah I suppose I'll stick with that that's fair yeah if you can get the trajectory right that uh, that cannon is is yeah. awesome but in zero G it's it's just a pain <laughs> I mean, so then, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, it, most of the time you just end up drifting in space, not really, not really uh, being able to aim properly, and yeah, that just gets on my nerve when playing a, a ball in zero G. Okay. Yeah, I agree. So the G parts, it's gonna be an interesting one. Yeah. So what do you think about the G Fighter? Uh, the G Fighter... I mean... Out of the G parts, I probably like only the G Bull, because it's basically... Uh, it's basically the gun tank, but uh, it can stand a bit more hits from the sides because of the shields. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I I would put it in the same uh, same tier as the the gun tank, the, the well the G bull at least. Um, G fighter I feel like doesn't do enough damage to be as good as the G defensor. Um, because they basically fulfill the same role. Like they're both just kind of yeah fortified subflight systems. Upper F tier. <laughs> um. And the G-Sky? Uh, that's just machine guns and yeah. missiles on a moving Which brick. Is a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. a moving brick. It is, for sure. Now, Edzem. Edzem, okay, that's go that goes right in the bottom eye. I don't like oh. the Edzem. I, I give it a little bit above. The, I give it the E tier, if only because the leaders are so cool when you can drop them on someone. Yeah, but it's incredibly hard to actually hit things with it. Yeah, that and the beam cannons are pretty much worthless. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you've convinced me to move it a few places above the Zagok, but... Uh... I don't think it makes the makes it into the E tier. <laughs> fair enough. Fair. I'll I'll take that. It's better than the Zock at least. Now the weird submarine thingy. Okay, that that one can Probably. stay on the bottom because it's well, it's usable on the bottom of the sea. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that's uh, basically yeah, where it stays. For all the things that I love about Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam, the underwater combat is not ideal unless you're using, like, a Zigok or an Agai, like... Or the Gog. <laughs> the Gog. The Gog's another good one. But if you're using a mobile armor underwater, mm -mm, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the Big Zam, yeah, I think it's... It's another one of those... Uh, where it's just a large target, but yeah, at least it has it has some presence, it has some meme potential, yeah, it has some coolness going for it. So it just yeah, some name recognition. Yeah, I'm putting it next to the gun tank, uh, slightly above it. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, it's just hard to hit it with some, or hard to hit enemies with some of the weapons. You you kind of like are basically counting on getting lucky. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've given up on uh, trying to hit things with the weapons. Uh, I'm just trying to stomp them. Kick. <laughs> yeah. Kick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, now for for the last four. Oh no, the Zacrello. Ah. Okay, it's basically big robot in space you know what I'm gonna be honest with you I've never once played as the Zacharello 
it's uh, it's incredibly I have awkward no to pilot. To play it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's. Even fighting against it, I was like, "This thing's bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the uh, the same goes for its uh, oddball cousin, the green one, the uh, the big grow. Uh, yeah, the big grow. I <laughs> I was having a hard time trying to uh, re uh, get uh, the name of it. You know what's funny is the only reason I remembered its name is because I was thinking about the Big Rang. Big Rang. From Mobile um, Suit Igloo. Yeah, the Big Rang. And uh, another. Like, there was this one mobile armor in. Uh, I think Stardust Memory. It looked like a crab. I liked it. Oh, the uh, Valwallo. Yeah, the Valwallo. I think that that is basically a big row that had their weapons attached to it. Look very similar. And they had you the know, ads in red so that it yeah. goes faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, this one thingy with the bits uh, adds the bra bro. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give the Brow Bro credit because it does have the bits and so you have a bit of the all range attacks but, you know, it's a huge target. Yeah, um, I think uh, well, I'm putting it slightly above the Psycho Mark 2 because it can actually move it uh, it has the detachable bits so it can actually set up a multi-range attack without running uh, out of ammo so fast and it can actually move move out of the way but I don't think I can get it any higher yeah I think that's fair I mean most of the mobile armors in this game are just terribly meme worthy <laughs> yeah uh, probably the same goes for uh, for the Almef yeah, I rate the Elmeth a little bit higher than the Brow bro, bro, just because the it has more bits, but, you know, the same weaknesses, really. Yeah, and, uh, it's not really able to properly attack outside of the sub-weapon, which is just homing. Cause I, I don't like the, the cannons on it, it's, it just fires forward, but in a very weird way. I just can't yeah, get they, used to it. They kind of have a weird tracking, but instead of arcing towards the target, they just kind of, like, drift in that direction. <laughs> yeah, it just flies <laughs> over there. It's like it's still pointed forwards, but it's moving sideways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I suppose that's it for the tier list. So, thanks for stopping by. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Very well then. Uh, I suppose we'll call it a day.